Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick. Um, it's been a long day. Uh, left the office, went to work out at the gym, hit the office again. Uh, about to grab me something to eat, sit home and probably read and study and contemplate how things are moving. I mean, business-wise, man, I'm excited. Uh, but the reason I'm here talking to you is there are some concerns I have about the people I love, and I'm talking about uh, the black race, my people, uh, African Americans, descendants of slaves. Um, before I get going, let me remind you that we are still in the middle of a fundraiser the links that you, you need, the information you need, whether it's a link, whether it's the organization's cash app account, information is in the description box. Show some love. Uh, everything uh, and anything that you do is appreciated. You know, I spend a lot of time in contemplation, introspective examination, and more of when, when it comes down to where I'm at in life, what I'm doing, the impact I'm having, uh, my people, what they are doing. And I'm honest with you, I'm really concerned about my people. And here's why. It's clear that a large number of our people are clueless. It's clear that Many want to remain in the fog because of the idea of actually having to put some work in and face some hard, cold facts is more than they can bear. That concerns me. It concerns me that even the ones who are somewhat aware are not ready to go all in to do what's necessary to win. I think about the gifts that we have had as people, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Megger Evers, uh, Carter G. Woodson, Amos Wilson, Francis Cress Wilson, Dr. Naeem Agbar, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, Chancellor Williams, Franz Fanon, Dr. Joy DeGruy. Ashri Kwasi. The list goes on. Dr. Yosef Ben Yakin. Um, Dr. Tony Browder. Who I've had a chance to share the stage with Dr. Claude Anderson. Dr. Omar Johnson, Dr. Boyce Watkins. We've had some of the most brilliant minds lay out blueprints. We've had some of the most exceptional researchers and historians reveal the truths. We've had some of the greatest researchers, Dr. Howard Stevenson, Dr. Joy DeGruy, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Naeem Agbar. I add myself to that equation with over 25 books, with over a thousand uh, academic papers, uh, with countless uh, reports and researches done, programs that developed and created. And we've made literally no progress. We have 41% home ownership, same as we did in the 60s remain at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. We're losing our boys at an alarming rate in, with multitudinous um, mechanisms and machinations at play to ensure that they are snatched up. The instruments of miseducation and misinformation are expanding while we create none. 
even though we have such uh, systems that have been developed, ideas, blueprints. Dr. Anderson has told us things. Dr. Umar Johnson, Dr. Naeem Arbar, Dr. Francis Crest Wilson, um, Neely Fuller Jr. The list goes on. James Smalls, the list goes on. We have been consistently warned we have been consistently informed and we remain stagnant. I've had people ask me with the substance that you share, why is it that you're following a small? Well, the first thing is the first page got took down. That was about 20,000. The thing is, I don't, uh, dance and perform. I don't start fights with other black brothers for the sake of creating conflict to build interest. I don't go out for no reason and find people to assault and attack and, and insult. I'm not here for the drama. There are people who have done things that I've actually taken issue to. You know what I did? I contacted them in private, expressed my discontent, told them I loved them, wish them the best. Some of us are friends now, some of us are not. So, I'm not going to get that, but, and I look at the videos on here. I've got approaching 1,800 videos on this channel. This isn't the only place. I've got uh, close to 700 articles on the Odyssey Project site solely about that. I've got 25 books published and I look around and the stuff on my YouTube channel that gets the most press connected to celebrities we're still hooked on sensationalism we're still hooked on uh, gossip we're still hooked on what someone else is doing and we're not taking the action we need to move ourselves in. Here's the problem. I'm a forward thinker. Myself, I fare pretty well seeing where I've come from, what I had against, up, what I was up against, uh, how many obstacles I had to face. I think I fare pretty well. I think that I'm going to finish this life having done quite a bit. But I'm thinking about my children, my grandchildren, their children and their grandchildren. What world will they have? What will they inherit? Um, how will my legacy have opened doors for them? Um, and I'm concerned. I'm concerned because we don't seem to be invested in moving ourselves forward. We love to complain. Uh, we're, we are expert complainers, but as I've said before, we are the most comfortable, uncomfortable people I've ever seen in my life. We complain about so much and do nothing about anything. Some people would be okay with having lived their lives and say, man, I did a whole lot better than what I started with. And I'm good with that. I tried to tell them and they didn't listen. And that's on them. I'm not built like that. I'm doing this because I care. I'm doing this because I love my people. I'm doing this because I have a passion for it. I'm doing this because I live for it. And so I'll keep doing it, but I'm really concerned. I'm concerned that my people won't get it. I'm concerned that the ones that get it won't do anything with it. I'm concerned that we're going to be stagnant until we become irrelevant. And that's not going to take too long with Latinos being moved into the places and positions that we once occupied that made us uh, necessary. We keep allowing things to happen where people use our struggle to advance themselves while doing nothing for us. We continue to fight battles for everyone else except ourselves. We'll go to the mat for some other cause, but when it comes down to doing what we need to be doing for ourselves, we balk 
at it. We fiddle with it. We play around with it. We're not committed enough to really put ourselves in the game. We don't want to put boots on the ground with any true presence. We don't want to get behind programs that could actually change the lives and the future of our children. We don't want to sit up and build enterprises that can open doors. We don't want to support new black media in a way that we become a strong force and we become a pathway for our creative children to have the ability to express themselves freely without having to sell their souls for a dollar. We'll complain about how horrible the music is, but we won't create an alternative for our uh, children and their talents. We let the mainstream pay them and then turn them out. We won't deal with the miseducation of our youth by providing alternative uh, educational institutions at every level, level from K through 12 to uh, advanced studies. We keep letting them buy into the lie that education will set the pathway. We are some of the most educated people, especially our women, and we have made no progress. The wealth gap is widening. My latest book is dealing with that very thing, and we have no real true momentum, no real true movement, no real true passion about it. We have a few people that love to talk about it. We have a few people that will click the like button and the share button. But for the most part, if it doesn't have some form of sensationalism, if it doesn't have some form of uh, gossip, some form of conflict, something that we can talk about and uh, we can look at and say how stupid somebody is or how crazy somebody is or how sad a situation is, we're not into it. We're not buying into it at a level that we need to. We're not giving. I'm concerned. But while I'm concerned, I'm committed. I'm going to find a way to invest myself even more without hurting myself and my family financially. But I'm one person. Imagine if just 10,000 people got behind one program and said, we got this program. This program is going to be successful. How many lives will we, will we change? I'm starting to get more and more of an influx of young black males. Now, there's two sides of this. I have clients who have parents who have money that are making sure that their boys get the support they need. And that's great. And I appreciate the business. But also, there are a lot of boys out there that don't have that advantage. And I do the best I can to reach as many as I can. But I can't do it by myself. There are girls out there who need support. 60% of our women are reporting that at some point in time before their 18th birthday, they were sexually abused, assaulted, or molested in some way. That's trauma. Most of them haven't been properly treated. Very few of them have experienced true healing. And that creates dysfunction. That creates devastation. That creates a cycle of generational trauma that we will not confront. I'm concerned. You know, if I were to put all this down, I'm going to be okay and my immediate progeny will be okay, but I'm concerned about down the line. What are we building for the future? We consistently talk about our children being our future. But we invest very little in our future. Uh, I'm concerned. I'm wondering if we really ever will wake up at a level that we can really truly execute the 
unlimited and phenomenal power we possess as a people? Or have we been sold on our mediocrity so well that we bought into it? That's my concern. I just had to share that with you because I, I look deep into things. I don't just do things for the sake of saying, hey man, you know, I'm getting subscribers, I'm getting likes, or, you know, people are buying my books. I'm, I'm what about, are, are we making progress? Are we doing something uh, that I can look up and say, man, look, my people are starting to organize. My people are starting to unify. When J. Edgar Hoover was asked what the greatest threat to U.S. security, national security, he said black unity. He understood if we if these people ever wake up and come together and unite, we've got a problem. And they have consistently and effectively moved in a way that has kept us divided, kept us at odds, kept us disinterested, kept us misled, misinformed, miseducated, and they have exploited every weakness created by this disunity. It's time to wake up. That's it. I just had to share that. I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm just really, really, truly concerned. And I'm hoping that one day we get it. With that being said, look, I'm going to get off of here. And uh, grab me something to eat. Again, for those people who want to support the work we do. Information's in the description box. For those people who want to work with us reach out the contact information is connected to the uh, account email me email the organization uh, for the for the, there's a couple of people who did email one like one 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 beautiful uh, sister is working you know in mental health and about to get her license and I hope she really invests we need them our children are catching hell. Our boys are being wore out in the academic system from the age five. From age five, they're targeted at a disproportionate le level to be pushed off into special education for financial reasons. Because special education, any, any kid assigned to special education, uh, a tag, gets a minimum of double what the school gets a minimum of double what the average student gets and in some districts and in some states three times that amount it's a money game to them and our kids are easy targets because many of the parents don't understand the system many of the parents are not educated enough to know what's what's happening or how to met, how to deal with it or how to confront it with our boys are disproportionately diagnosed with ADHD and oppositional defiant disorder, which leads to psychotropic medication, psych psychotropic drugs, schedule two drugs like Vyvanse, Concerta, uh, Ritalin, Adderall. Those are, set, those are schedule two drugs, meaning they're highly addictive and they have very little medicinal value, but they're pumping them into five-year-olds literally and up and we're wondering why our boys are dropping out at alarming rates and what we don't understand is every time we get a boy that drops out he becomes five times more likely to be incarcerated we're wondering why out of the 2.3 million Americans who are incarcerated over 1 million of them are black males we need to wake up on that note, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Thank you for sharing and allowing me to share and uh, take a little bit of your time. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable weekend.